David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, The Story of a Shipwrecked Sailor by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This book cost me 50 cents, and I swear it was the best 50 cents I ever spent. <laughs> the reason I say that is because this story was fun to read. It was full of suspense. There were surprises here and there. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. The sailor, his name was Luis Alejandro Varesco. He was with his crew in Mobile, Alabama, while his ship, the Navy destroyer Caldos, was being repaired. And so during his time, he watched a movie called The Cane Mutiny. It was shortly before they were to sell off to Colombia, and the movie gave him a strange feeling, so much that he decided that he would quit the Navy when he got back to Colombia. That's how much this movie affected him. And they set sail on February 26, 1955, and when they got to the Gulf of Mexico, Luis had a strange premonition, like something bad was about to happen. One of his crewmates said, oh, this is a wolf ship. It's a safe ship. You'll be just fine. Don't worry. But heavy winds and giant waves pushed the ship over. And since everybody was on deck, the whole crew went into the water. The ship didn't sink, though. The ship turned right back up. And it somehow maneuvered by itself through the waves. And so it was Luis with his crewmates in the water. Luis said, For a second the ship seemed suspended in air. I started to raise my arm to look at my watch, but at that moment I couldn't see my arm or my watch either. And I didn't see the wave coming. And so they were in the water. Somehow, some way, Luis is saved by a, a raft. It, uh, it's just near him, so he gets on this raft. But his other uh, shipmates weren't so lucky. They all drowned. So he spent 10 days and nights on the Caribbean in a raft. And during this time, he saw three planes flying over him. But they didn't see him. So he started to feel kind of hopeless. Back home, uh, they called the search off after four days, and assumed that everybody had died. There was even a funeral for each of them. Sharks were circling the raft regularly. They came at a certain time, usually in the evening around 5 p.m. And at night, there wasn't any light except for the moon and stars. It was, it was very quiet, and he was out at sea by himself, and he could hear things in the water. <laughs> Uh, in the raft, Louise had no point of reference. He didn't know if he was moving forward or backward. He wasn't sure. The sun seared his face and shoulders, and the salt water split his lips. And he was dehydrated, so he did take some sips of salt water. Even though drinking ocean water or salt water is, is kind of dangerous, but he did take some sips. He was so hungry that he actually caught a little seagull. He killed it with his bare hands, and he tried to skin it with his bare hands because he had no knives or anything. But uh, he wasn't so successful. He, you know, he thought about eating it raw, but he couldn't, so he just threw it to the sharks and let the sharks fight over it. He tried to eat his shoes, but he couldn't tear them apart. Uh, <laughs> I only saw this one time in a Charlie Chaplin film where... He was so hungry that he actually cooked his shoes, or one of his shoes. <laughs> and he ate the shoestrings and stuff. A fish jumped into the raft, and he did eat some of that. And then a shark stole it, so he couldn't really eat the whole thing. He came close to death when a giant wave tipped his raft over. He almost died a couple times during this instance but he managed to make it. He knew he was getting closer to land when he kept seeing seagulls, and they kept flying over. And then he also saw the water change color. 
he, he knew that that was a signal of land. And he was having hallucinations about land. He was having strange dreams. And then he came across real land. At first, he didn't think it was real. He thought maybe it was just another hallucination. From the moment he was discovered, he became an instant celebrity. He eventually advertised products, watches, shoes, these things that he wore at sea. He said this, he said, The first realization when you become an important person is that all day and all night, whatever the circumstances, people want to hear you talk about yourself. But yeah, he made a lot of money selling his story, advertising products like gum, uh, you know, like I said, the shoes that he was wearing on the trip, the watch that he was wearing, he advertised those. And, you know, after a while, though, he escaped into oblivion. He, you know, got a job somewhere and at a bus company. And then eventually he became an insurance agent and he died on August 2nd, 2000 at the age of 66. What this story tells me is that humans are capable of quite a bit and our bodies can handle a lot, a lot more than what we think. And this guy proves it to me, at least. Well, anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.